My name is Helen Pankhurst. And that Pankhurst surname is an amazing one. A talisman for women's rights and for social justice. Even today, women's eyes, men's eyes light up and there's a smile on their face when they ask and they hear the surname and they say, you're not related by any chance. <laughs> well, I am. And I'm forever and always honored to be Emmeline Pankhurst's great-granddaughter and Sylvia's granddaughter. I'm proud to speak to you today as their direct descendant and ambassador for Care International's Voices Against Violence campaign, which, with others, calls for an end to violence against women in conflict and their inclusion in peace building. Emmeline and Sylvia Pankhurst were leaders of the WSPU, a movement nicknamed the suffragette as a term of derision. Just like that feminist term is a term of derision, the suffragettes was a term of derision, but it became a term of power, a term of, that was reclaimed by women. So we have to be reclaiming that feminist term. They, as us, they were part of a powerful, colourful group of people who formed a movement with its factions and controversies, but which nevertheless brought momentous changes, not just through votes for women, but because in innumerable ways, the suffragettes changed the public perception and personal beliefs of what women could aspire to. The mobilisation that they achieved their feistiness and courage in the face of years of ridicule and domestic, public and state violence continues to inspire us today. And inspire us it must, everywhere. The struggle for equality is far from over. Today, the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day, we've been walking around areas of London in which a hundred years ago, the suffragettes were in action. The Votes for Women campaign in the UK was very much linked to a wider movement of social change sweeping the world. And I think they're here in spirit, encouraging us with our international cause. From Afghanistan, as we heard, to Chechnya, Colombo, Colombia rather, <laughs> Congo, Iraq, Nepal, Sudan, Uganda, and other countries I couldn't miss name. Gender-based violence is regularly used as a weapon of war. Women's bodies are battlegrounds as sexual intimidation, violence, rape, and torture are used as methods of humiliation and control. And then, when the war has petered out or been won and it comes to peace negotiations and settlements, women almost never have a seat at the negotiating table. Over a 25 year period, less than one in 40 signatories to peace agreements have been women. And no woman has been appointed chief or lead mediator in UN sponsored peace talks. This needs to change. And how can we, as individuals, make a difference? Through this instant communication world of ours, there's so much that we can do to show we care, to speak up against today and yesterday's violence, whether it happens in inner London or outer Mongolia. We live in a globalized world, and it matters wherever that violence against women is happening, wherever they are being silenced. What the suffragettes would not have given for the visibility of the powerful and wonderful women and men backing our cause today. For the campaigning and mobilizing tools we now have at hand, literally on the iPhones and laptops so many of us carry around. So we're asking you to use these links and these tools to be international in your attention to justice for women, to send a postcard to your MP highlighting the dangers to women and the need for their inclusion in peace building. Come on down to the care stall, there's one over there, and you can take action now and open your laptops to follow up in the future. The greatest homage that we can pay to the legacy of the suffragettes, including to Emmeline and to Sylvia, is to continue with their vision, their courage and their panache and be part of a vibrant global movement towards genuine freedom against violence 
and the achievement of equality everywhere. And just lastly, wow. Wow to us all.